Hello, today we will discuss different kind of sorting algorithms and the time complexity of each sorting algorithm and finally we will decide which sorting algorithm is the best one. What is sorting? Sorting is nothing but arranging the elements either in decreasing order or increasing order. Before we start our discussion, one must know that efficiency of sorting algorithm depends on the type of the input that we are considering for sorting and the size of the input that we are considering for sorting. What do I mean by type of the input? Type of the input is nothing but whether the elements that we are considering for sorting are already sorted or partially sorted or yet to be sorted. And what do I mean by size of the input? It's nothing but the number of the elements that we are considering for sorting. So let's start our discussion with bubble sort. In bubble sort, we'll arrange the largest element at the end. Thus, in each iteration, the largest element gets settled down at the end. So, if we consider the elements here, so in the first iteration, 6 and 5 are compared and they will get trapped. So, we'll left with 5, 6, 3, 7, 8, 2, 4. And next, 6 and 3 are compared. So as 6 is greater than 3, they again get wrapped up. So we'll be having these set of elements. And next, 6 and 7 are compared. 6 is obvious, smaller than 7, so no swapping will happen. So 5, 3, 6, 7, 8, 2, 4 will be left. And next, 7 and 8 are compared. Same, 7 is also smaller, so no swapping will happen. Again, 8 and 2 are compared. So 8 is greater than 2, they will get swapped now. 2, 8, 4 will end up. And again, 8 and 4 are compared. 6, 7, 2, 4, 8. Thus, we'll settle down the largest element among the set of elements at the bottom. Thus, in each iteration, the largest elements get settled down. Next, we'll end up with 8 over here and 7 over here. Thus, and again we'll end up with 6, 5, in each duration the largest elements get it settled down over here. If we come down to the time complexity of bubble sort, in each iteration we'll be having to compare, in first iteration we'll be having to compare n, and n type in comparisons, and in next iteration n minus 1 comparisons, and in next iteration n minus 2 comparisons, till we reach 1. Thus, in worst case time complexity of sort, uh, bubble sort is nothing but n into n minus 1 by 2, which is nothing but we go off n squared. This is the worst case of bubble sort. If we come to best case of bubble sort, if the elements are already sorted, then we will not be having to do any comparisons, so we just will be having to loop through the uh, array itself, so we will be end up with we go off n. So, best case of Time complexity of bubble sort is we go off n. If we come down to the average case, it turns out to be we go off n square as the average case of the bubble sort. And next we'll discuss insertion sort. Insertion sort is normally done inserting the element to where it belongs. Like if we have 5 and 15 and 7. If we have to insert 7, we'll insert in between 5 and 15. So, if we have, we'll consider first 6 and we have to, ha, we'll have to insert 5 now. So, 5 is smaller than 6. So, 5, 6. And we'll consider 3. 3 is again smaller than 5 and 6. Go for 3, 6, 5. Next, 3, 5, 6, sorry. And next we have 7 over here. 7 is greater than 3, 5, 6. So, 7 gets come uh, over here, over there itself. And we have 8, and 8 is also bigger than all of them. So, it just like goes and sits there. And we have 2. We know that 2 is big, bigger than, no, lesser than 3. So, 2 comes here. And we have 4. 4 has to be set down in between 3 and 5. Now, we'll end up finally with 3, 5, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. In insertion sort is nothing but we'll check for an element in the entire array where it actually supposed to belong. So the time complexity of insertion sort comes out to be in each element we'll be having to walk back to check it out where it belongs. So in the worst case it, it takes bigger of n square time and, and in best case it takes bigger of n time 
as we'll be having to, we'll just will not be having to, uh, like if we have eight over here and if we have nine, then we just know it should be placed just before a, uh, just after a. So the time complexity is going to be, we go of n in the best case, if we come down to the average case, obviously it turns out to be we go of n square. And the insertion sort works on decrease and conquer algorithm. And if we come to selection sort, Selection sort is nothing but we'll find the minimum of the elements among all the unsorted elements and we'll place it in a right position. Like if we have 6, 5, 3, 7, 8, 2, 4, we'll consider 6 as a minimum one. Obvious, that doesn't make any sense, but it's a brute force algorithm, so we have to consider 6 as the minimum element and we'll find which is the smallest element in this including 6 so 2 is the smallest element now we will swap 2 and 6 so it turns out to be 2 6 2 5 3 7 8 6 4 and again we got 2 over here in the, in the rest of the array we will consider this as the minimum and we will find which is the smallest one 3 is the smallest one. Now these two will get swapped up. 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 6, 4. Now in the rest array, we'll consider this as the minimum uh, and we'll find which is much, much lesser uh, among all these. 4 is the minimum one. So now these two will get swapped up. 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 6, 5. Now in this, We'll consider this and we'll find among uh, all these elements smaller is a 5. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 6, 7. And those will finally end up with 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we come down to the time complexity of selection sort. It is nothing but like as we have to traverse entire array to find a minimum in the uh, unsorted elements. So, it takes big O of n square time itself for sorting. If we, in the best case, if, we, if the elements are already sorted, then the comparisons will be lesser even though the swaps will be happen with the element itself. If I have, like if I consider 2, two as the minimum, and in the rest elements, I found the two only is the minimum minimum one. Then two gets swapped with itself, even though in the best case it takes bigger of n square time. If we come down to merge sort, merge sort works on divide and conquer rule. In this, array is get divided into two equal halves, and it is done recursively until we reach to only one element. And then it gets sorted accordingly by comparison and gets merged to two. So, how does this merge happen? If we have, if the array is divided into two equal parts, A and B, and we have two pointers, I and J, to point the elements of A and B, and we have now put array C, which is, which, which has pointer K, and it starts from 1 to N. So, this is how it works. If for K equal to 1 to N, if A of I is less than B of J, then it should get placed then c of k should be a of i and we have to increment i plus plus else if a of i is greater than b of j then c of k, k should be updated with b of j i mean b of j should be come over here now then j plus plus should be increased and the if we come down to the time complexity of merge sort in the best case it is we go of n log n and in the worst case then also it is big O of n log n and in the world, in the average case also it is big O of n log n. How did we get this big O of n log n? As we have to divide it, the, divide the array, like if we have 32 elements, we'll be having to divide it, divide it with only n elements. So, like if we have 32 elements, like log power, log 32 base 2 will give me 5. I mean, 32 I'll be having to divide by 
exactly five times like 30 to 16, 16 to 8, 8 to 4, 4 to 2, 2 to 1. So I'll be having to divide it with this. So it takes log n time for dividing and n time for multiplying. So totally n log n time. And best best and average case also it takes big of n log n time. If we come to quick sort, quick sort will uh, divide the array in three parts. In uh, will select a pivot. And the efficiency of the quick sort depends mainly on selecting the pivot. If we select the pivot and the first element, then the time complexity difference differs. And if we select the last element or any element, then also the time complexity differs. In this quick sort, we will select an element of P, which is nothing but a pivot, and we will divide the array in three parts such that with whatever the elements which are less than P comes in this array and whatever the elements that are greater than P comes in this array and equal to P comes in this array. Thus, quick sort works and in this quick sort, if we take the elements 6, 5, 3, 7, 8, 2, 4 and we take 6 as a pivot, then 6 comes here, 5 is less than 6, so comes here and 3 is again less than uh, 6 comes here and 7 is greater than 6 and 8 is greater than 6 and 2 is less than 6 comes over here and 4 is also less than 6 comes here. Thus it gets selected and gets sorted finally and here also it comes to be pivot is selected and same process is done. Thus the finally the element gets sorted. We come to the uh, time complexity of quick sort it takes bigger of n log n time in its average case and big O of n square time in its best case and big O of n square time itself in n log n time in best case. So what is in, uh, worth noticing is big O of n log n time in average case. Yeah, and if we have, we have heap sort and uh, bucket sort and uh, radix sort which to take big of n log n time even in best and worst and uh, uh, average cases but we will say quick sort is the best sorting algorithm because in the average case also it takes big of n log n time and doesn't take any extra memory if we, if we see merge sort it takes some extra memory for copying the elements so in, in the average case itself the quick sort just don't take any, any extra space it just uh, uh, the memory is allocated and uh, sorted in the space that was previously allocated itself. Thus, we can claim that quicksort is the best sorting algorithm. Thank you.